Okay. Um, good morning, Seth. I uh, appreciate you uh, joining. It uh, also keeps me from um, being paranoid about having misposted or, or otherwise screwed up the, the meeting invitation. Um, I've got approximately 30 minutes of material to go through uh, here. Uh, please feel free to, to jump in. We can make this obviously as interactive as possible. Uh, from your end, uh, we'll uh, certainly welcome on others, folks, as uh, they come on board. Um, hopefully you noted uh, in the preceding couple of minutes, I did turn on the recorder, so the, uh, the session is being recorded and hopefully uh, we can post this to the site to uh, make it available to anybody else in the, the academic sector that uh, wasn't able to join us at this time. I will go ahead and, and dive into the material. Uh, open this. Okay. So, uh, in the past, uh, Vision has had GIS strategic plans that have focused on five year uh, performance cycles. Uh, for this instance, uh, we are uh, identifying a three year time frame for this strategic planning cycle. Uh, we're going to be implementing some uh, infrastructure and uh, pieces to, to get uh, more community engagement uh, to highlight Vision's uh, responsibilities through Code of Virginia to be a facilitator for uh, the broadest stakeholder community, uh, working with individual communities such as the academic sector, state agencies, localities, businesses, and citizens, uh, and also getting those stakeholder communities more engaged with one another. Um, this three-year time frame also co is coincident with the 911 uh, comprehensive plan update. Uh, with the focus on next generation 911 deployment beginning in Q1 of, of next calendar year and being complete for the entire state uh, by the end of calendar year 2021. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of uh, resources being put towards next generation 911 and there will also be uh, strategic initiatives or a strategic initiative of the GIS strategic plan uh, that builds on that integrated nature uh, between Next Generation 911 and GIS. Again, we want to, to use this time frame to put some uh, infrastructure in place, uh, focusing on enterprise engagement, and then also uh, in previous uh, renditions of the GIS strategic plan, uh, those have been uh, outsourced uh, through contractors to organize and coordinate um, input from the community as well as the drafting of the plan and then finalization came to, to the ISP staff uh, in the context that we're looking at uh, for this cycle. Uh, it is being completed internally uh, with ISP resources, uh, myself in, in the role of region coordinator uh, leading the uh, or having the lead responsibility to get the draft complete. Uh, in on time, and my counterpart Dorothy Spears Dean working with the the 911 community. Uh, some level setting and baselining uh, applied uh, across all of the stakeholder communities. Uh, we want to make sure that we can accommodate all levels of GIS proficiency and an enterprise context in the academic sector uh, that uh, covers both the the context of. Um, the academic and research side as well as the, the operations and fiscal plan side um, across all of the academic partners and, and participants. Uh, some uh, universities having a, a very large infrastructure, multiple departments engaged, et cetera. Um, some others uh, having a much more modest infrastructure and, and, and GIS stakeholder community. Uh, we want to make sure to, to reach out and, and be relevant to all of them. Uh, we want to make sure that, that the benefits drive engagement and nothing is prescriptive. Uh, some of the, the ideas uh, some folks may be ready for, some uh, folks may want to, to sit back, uh, and that, that's perfectly okay. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, any contributions and any investment of, of the time and resources from the stakeholder community, uh, those, those participants have a, a right and an expectation uh, to have uh, some expected benefits in their their day to day operations and in uh, making their enterprise stronger, and we certainly want to make sure to to gain that feedback uh, as we move forward. And we'll, we'll 
be talking about uh, what we envision to put in place uh, through this three-year planning cycle. Again, Beeson uh, focusing on supportive facilitation and then also making sure that um, as we progress through these strategic implementation roles, uh, that what we develop is relevant to the, the respective stakeholder communities and uh, the largest uh, enterprise uh, by definition across the Commonwealth. Uh, the engagement model that we've had uh, previously, uh, the Virginia Geographic Information Network Advisory Board is uh, codified in Code of Virginia in the, in the, uh, the reference that you see on the, the right. And then the Integrated Services Program, uh, Beijing having uh, two uh, chapters or two sections, if you will, uh, within Code of Virginia that lays out uh, the responsibilities of uh, the Beijing organization and the, the Beijing coordinator uh, as the, the lead for the agency. Um, there are specific pieces. Some of that uh, has been uh, primarily put in place in 1997 with some minor updates uh, when VITA was formed in 2003, but largely uh, the focus on uh, the utilization, the effective utilization of uh, geospatial data and technologies, as well as providing um, uh, in the 1997 nomenclature a catalog of, of available data uh, in modern terms uh, supporting uh, discoverability and access through uh, data set downloads, web services, and, and a variety of, of other uh, means uh, across the enterprise. Through the strategic plan uh, process, uh, we're going to be proposing to, to focus initially on standing up two management groups, uh, one from state agencies and another from uh, localities. Uh, we understand that, that the uh, academic and uh, business communities are also stakeholders that we want to reach out to uh, over the, the period of this uh, process, but uh, we've got to get these two stood up first and then we've lessons learned from that circle back for feedback, input, et cetera, uh, engagement with the, the academic community. Uh, we by no means want to imply that, um, uh, that you're not going to have a role in the first six months, but we do want to, to focus on getting these two groups stood up and we'll continue the dialogue with the, the strategic, or sorry, with the academic community in their engagement with this strategic plan and, and process. So to, to very briefly uh, review the, the strategic plan, um, VITA has a, an internal guidance to have uh, strategic plans uh, formatted in, in one page of content. Uh, the expectation is that that really uh, forces the programs and, and the responsibility to um, highlight and, and really uh, determine focus. Uh, we can certainly um, interpret beyond that. Uh, what I've displayed and what I've, uh, has been uh, presented in draft form to the, the Beijing Advisory Board is to categorize the priorities in four areas, uh, policy and strategy, engagement, collaboration, and communications, and then five strategic initiatives. And we'll go through the strategic initiatives uh, one by one uh, in the next portion of, of this presentation. Uh, the idea in context here is to be able to, to group and roll up and prioritize uh, and tell a, a story of engagement. Uh, the CIO and, and agency leadership uh, is seeking to, to move us away from 50-page uh, reports that, that sit on the shelf uh, as a, an exercise, but actually have this becoming uh, a path to the transparency, responsiveness, and community input, and hopefully that will be borne out as we uh, roll through the, the strategic initiatives. Um, in the context of, of having a one-page strategic plan, there's still a necessity to be able to uh, engage and, and provide, again, the transparency and the, the, the persistent update. Uh, in the, the GIS community, we'll be doing uh, a story map and, and associated uh, dashboards to be able to um, periodically update on a quarterly or at least biannual basis 
but also that can be the touchstone for uh, reaching out. We'll have sections for each of the priority areas as well as each of the strategic initiatives, and that can be a, a one-stop, if you will, for being able to, to bring this uh, to uh, a broader community, but also, again, uh, un underpin uh, the expectation of, of transparency and engagement. To run through the uh, five strategic initiatives uh, very briefly, uh, the first strategic initiative is for priority identification, soliciting input from a stakeholder community. Uh, this is where we'll be formulating the uh, standing up, if you will, uh, the state agency managers group and the locality managers group. Uh, over the, the course of, of the strategic planning town hall meetings and other input opportunities, uh, we've been uh, soliciting uh, membership and, and interest from participants into these groups. Uh, we want to, for the, the localities, this will be based on the ISP regions, uh, seven of those across the state that will be looking for at least two participants uh, to be part of the, the regular quarterly meetings. Um, and we'll also use those managers uh, to, to work within other organizations to find uh, managers and practitioners. We don't really want to limit ourselves to just those, uh, in theory, 14 members and their particular skill sets, backgrounds, and interests. Uh, we want to, to make sure that as we uh, solicit ideas, content, strategic, and, and tactical direction uh, through these management committees, uh, we want to, to be able to draw on subject matter experts on an as-needed basis. Uh, you'll see here that on the slides for the strategic initiatives, we have some fonts that are blue, some fonts that are green. Uh, blue is, is the, the high-level uh, organization initialization of the strategic initiative, but the green portions are where we're going to need additional engagement and feedback uh, to, to be able to set direction. We don't want, you know, VITA will coordinate and facilitate, uh, but we're really looking for the, uh, the owners uh, and the equity into those management processes uh, to be able to guide some of the, uh, the deployment side. So uh, once we get the uh, management groups stood up, if you will, uh, the first task will be uh, visioning uh, a one-year and a three-year kind of work plan for what needs to be prioritized uh, relative to, to everything that we could potential work on, but then also being able to message that out and getting the feedback, input, and engagement uh, across the entirety of the, the stakeholder community. Um, you can see there that uh, we're looking for the, uh, the additional stakeholder groups uh, to come online in mid-2020. Uh, the calendar and graphic here uh, demonstrates that uh, the Legion Advisory Board, again, established through Code of Virginia, meets on a quarterly basis. Nominally, that's January, April, July, and October. Uh, right now, we have it envisioned to uh, meet with the state agency group, uh, management group on the, uh, the green highlighted months of February, May, August, and November. And then also the uh, the blue highlights being the uh, locality management group in the March, June, September, and December tempo. Um, having spent time in the academic community, certainly understand uh, the context of academic calendars, uh, trying to work within a diversity of, of participants and, and opportunities to, to work with folks. So uh, we'll be seeking feedback there um, in the, the spring time frame before people start uh, moving on to other things in the, in the May through August time frame, uh, but certainly looking to get something stood up um, later in the, uh, sometime in the Q2 time frame uh, before um, summer uh, time activities. Strategic initiative number two uh, deals with data standards and other technical issues. Uh, we have a number of existing standards uh, for road center lines, address points, TSAP boundaries, administrative boundaries, uh, again, prioritized historically with next generation 911 preparation uh, in advance of deployment. Uh, also, uh, you know, the context here being that um, the initial vision was pointing towards 
uh, the uh, National Emergency Number Association draft standards. Uh, those have been finalized and there are some minor alignment issues uh, that we'd like to address uh, more broadly. Uh, now that these standards have been used and in place since uh, beginning in 2015 and most recently updated in 2017, getting feedback from the management communities on uh, the effectiveness, are there pieces that are missing or uh, entities or elements that, that aren't represented in those standards that we want to uh, consider moving forward. Uh, in the green area, uh, noting that there's uh, several obvious uh, gaps, if you will, in the existing standards uh, that could represent parcels, elevation, hydro, uh, potentially other themes. Uh, again, getting the, the feedback from the, the variation of, of the stakeholder communities, uh, how does this impact your business processes, your applications today, applications in the future, and using that as a forum to convey to VITA uh, what the priorities of the community are. Uh, also, uh, tracking the development and deployment of the National Spatial Reference System, uh, NSRS 2022, uh, will be hopefully becoming more clear during the lifetime of, of this strategic plan uh, timeframe. So we want to roll that into this technical session section of the strategic initiatives uh, to work uh, across the, the stakeholder communities and make sure to disseminate information and um, encourage preparation for how NSRS is rolled out at, at a national level. With strategic initiative number three, we have titled it value-based best practices, uh, really um, empowering the community to think in terms of um, demonstrating uh, geospatial uh, value and worth in the context of uh, the business user. Uh, the GIS community in general does a great job of talking amongst ourselves and impressing each other in terms of, of the number of um, map services or the number of terabytes that our, our uh, clearinghouses or data portals uh, convey, but really trying to think in terms of the business users. Every potential uh, business uh, enterprise lead should be a champion if you can give them the information that's relevant to them. How does their business process benefit uh, from uh, the context of, of geospatial enablement? So in the, the blue font here, uh, thinking in terms of uh, finding uh, positive examples and success stories for having a strategic plan for your enterprise GIS. Uh, how are you engaging cloud or uh, virtual platforms? Um, how do you uh, work with current and existing uh, business systems and applications? Are there impacts or improvements that can be uh, gained through uh, better data architecture or engagement in data governance? I would also throw into this area uh, the, the rise of, of analytics uh, in, the, in, the, in the business enterprise management context, as well as things like IoT and uh, items that, that didn't appear in the current 2015 to 2020 GI strategic plan that are very commonplace today. Uh, aligning uh, these GIS orientations to uh, your, the rest of your enterprise. So your app, whether it's your application development model or your uh, data architecture, data governance uh, concerns, uh, making sure that GIS is, is not a uh, perceived or uh, functioning as a separate stovepipe, but it's, it's better integrated. Uh, being able to uh, have a staff development plan for your entire enterprise GIS. As technology evolves, uh, how do you make the case uh, to keep your staff and the technical folks up to speed, but also um, understanding that you have a target and that you're not just um, uh, taking a best estimate, but you have a long-term vision for what staff need to be prepared uh, in, in, the, in the geospatial context moving forward. In terms of business outcome metrics, uh, again, using that as a, as a jumping off point for the, the various stakeholder uh, structures uh, to be able to work within uh, their communities, within the, the state agency community, within the, the local 
uh, GIS management community uh, to, to encourage the, uh, the context of, of finding uh, the relationship between the geospatial investment and what that means for the business lines and execution for efficiency, cost avoidance, cost savings um, in terms of, of um, improving overall service and performance and being able to, to tell that story and then hopefully orient towards um, having the entire organization leadership uh, become potential champions for what it is uh, that we do and, and take for granted on a daily basis as a community. Strategic initiative number four is our direct support for, for Next Generation 911. Um, the uh, preparations for, for Next Gen 911 in the, in the area of GIS uh, within VIA has begun uh, going back as far as 2014 and 2015 with the development of the ITRM standards, uh, the data report card, uh, the engagement with localities to share um, the specific pieces uh, most uh, closely aligned with road center lines and, and address points, data content, and data quality. Um, the preparation uh, speaks for itself. We can quantify uh, the overall improvements both in uh, data quality and updates on data cycles. Uh, because GIS will be integral to um, the, the provisioning of, of public safety services uh, when Next Generation 911 is fully developed, that, that data quality and, and persistence in, in um, keeping data up to date is going to benefit um, a much broader stakeholder community beyond just the public safety sector. So we want to be able to, to highlight that, uh, make sure that, that we're supporting the, the public safety community and the um, in dealing with uh, best practices, um, including the or focusing on the, the engagement between the GIS and the PSAP communities. But then also uh, there is a, is a vast quantity of data uh, that's being generated or will be generated uh, to, to look at the efficiency of, of 911 services. So being able to support the, the analytics side of that uh, will be an important component that, that VITA will be supporting. And then finally, uh, strategic initiative number five is uh, broadly termed enterprise engagement. But being able to um, facilitate working among the stakeholder groups, um, so state agencies working better with one another, localities working better with one another, uh, supporting um, regional uh, GIS initiatives where they exist, uh, helping to develop them where they don't exist, but then also facilitating engagement uh, between the stakeholder communities. Uh, through the town halls, uh, one of the, uh, the discussion questions that I posed uh, to the localities and the locality GIS managers was that VITA does a data call uh, in the January and July timeframes for five data sets, road center lines, address points, uh, administrative boundaries, uh, building footprints, and one of them I'm moving out. Uh, but or, um, Anyway, um, asking those communities what perceived benefit they get from their contribution. Uh, do they simply give us the data so that we stop calling them? Because uh, we do follow up on a, on a regular cycle if we don't hear back from them. But more to the point, how can we find um, areas of value that are current and areas of value that we can contribute? Again, the understanding that uh, if we're asking for something, there needs to be a, a real tangible benefit coming back in return in, in any relationship. How can we demonstrate a better relationship uh, and a better opportunity? For example, uh, communities providing road center line updates, that in turn updating uh, the statewide RCL and in turn VDOT linear referencing system, are there, are there business data components from databases, not just in VDOT, but across other agencies that could be tied to that. So that the maintenance and contribution from the localities actually comes full circle to bring other relevant business data uh, back to, to help in, in their enterprise. 
So we will also uh, be looking at, at timelines and next steps. Uh, we do have uh, the webinars uh, will continue through uh, next week. Uh, we'll be integrating uh, the feedback into the strategic plan one page document as well as uh, the story map as it's developed. Uh, we'll be setting up the, uh, the membership and uh, getting the initial formulation of the uh, state agency and locality manager groups in um, early January and uh, be ready to go into the, the regular cycles as we indicated on the, the preceding um, uh, graphic. Also, as I said a couple of times, uh, be looking to, to seek feedback and input from the, the academic community. Uh, I think uh, we'll probably look at uh, trying to use the, the VAMLIS uh, conference in April uh, as a touch point and an opportunity to engage, but also seeking other opportunities as we move forward. Uh, ultimately, the, the January board meeting uh, for the Vigian Advisory Board, uh, because 40% of the, the advisory board is actually composed of um, delegates and senators from the Virginia uh, General Assembly, uh, the January meeting uh, is usually the week preceding the, the session start, so we do have a, an early January time frame uh, to wrap up the, um, the strategic plan page as well as uh, get the storyboard uh, put to bed and, and on the public website uh, for uh, the board's review and input. And then we'll get right to work on uh, the, the implementation of those strategic initiatives. So with that, uh, that is the material that I've had here. We were targeting approximately 30 minutes. Uh, I think we're on time there. Uh, the remaining time is, is to the community for uh, feedback, observations, suggestions, questions, input. Um, I will stop talking and the floor will be yours. How do you envision the uh, garden program uh, fitting into the strategic plan going forward? Currently, uh, we've got um, VCU and Virginia Tech that are. Um, continuing to be part of the garden program. Uh, it's certainly something that, that we would want to uh, seek input in terms of the prioritization, uh, the relevance, the, the idea and context of, of what works best for the broader community. Um, I think uh, much of the, the garden, um, the day-to-day the, the -to -day and the tactical side of garden has focused on uh, deployment of, of uh, shared ortho imagery and, and LIDAR data. I think um, I would anticipate that input from across the various stakeholder groups, across the state agencies, across the local government, across the academic community. Uh, I think the uh, part of what needs to, to, to be developed is, is a better user story on how LIDAR is used. Uh, we have uh, some data being stored and served by USGS, uh, others by NOAA. Uh, I know um, uh, CGIT at Virginia Tech has, has a significant store of data and, and so does VEGEN. Um, storing it four times or, or, or serving it up in, in four different formats uh, is repetitive and, and I think ultimately um, you know, not as effective for an enterprise solution, but more to the point when it comes to, to elevation and LIDAR, uh, we don't have a, a strong um, or a, uh, an articulated position on the derived products from LIDAR. So uh, is uh, contours, uh, elevations, slope aspect, uh, hill shape, the, the variety of products that you can derive from LIDAR uh, raw data, uh, those actually are, are what you pull into applications and analysis. Uh, 
So I think uh, facilitating uh, a discussion among stakeholder groups to figure out what the priorities are uh, for an enterprise approach would be um, very beneficial um, across the broader community. I would completely concur with all of that. Um, thinking back to the genesis of the garden program where we were in-kind contribution in the form of mirroring services that were not uh, cost-effective for VGN to maintain in exchange for the uh, um, the requirement by statute for VGN recover costs. Um, I'm wondering if, if that original raison d'etre is still uh, in place or with uh, Cloud storage with uh, ArcGIS Online with the different vehicles for data interchange that are now available to VGN. Um, I, I want to make sure that we as higher eds are providing you guys with the best in kind value adding service that we can. And if it turns out that mirroring is not necessarily the function that needs to happen, then we want to transition to something that is uh, is relevant to you. And you, you alluded to things like uh, creation of derived products, things like that. And to, to my mind, Garden has always been about universities doing what they're good at to uh, cover the use cases that are considered out of scope by VGN. So if there are use cases that you currently have that are out of scope or there are data products that are prohibitive to store and disseminate or there are analytical derivations of information products that you guys don't have the staff or expertise to do, you know, we want to be maximally applying our expertise to help you guys. Uh, we completely concur and agree, and I guess that in, in evaluating and assessing the, the direction that, that we want to collaborate and, and figure out, uh, I think the, the, it's a reasonable expectation of um, the garden participants to, to come back and uh, provide uh, the benefits that are being accrued back to the, the institutions, uh, whether it's just engaging with a, a broader community, serving the community on your individual campuses or across the, uh, the, the, the broader enterprise, um, making sure that, that uh, this uh, investment of time and resources uh, is also something that you can leverage uh, in a positive way uh, in your own uh, environments and campuses. Definitely, it continues to be uh, a very valuable partnership. I think you're right that we haven't really articulated those stories um, uh, concisely and eloquently of exactly how that's taking place so that we could provide uh, folks who are making decisions on this and overseeing your organization with, with some more tangible uh, description of it. Yeah, it's, it, it's really an evolution in, in both uh, born out in the, in the variety of inputs that we've solicited through the uh, the development of getting to this point for the, the GI strategic plan update, but also uh, uh, nationally. Um, personally, I've been doing this for uh, almost two and a half decades, and then one of the, the common themes has been uh, developing a champion and, and finding one person uh, in a in a organization at a high enough level to move the needle, needle and make a difference. But what we're seeing is, is things evolving that you don't need to develop or cultivate a single champion, but think more in terms of uh, messaging so that that business executive understands that the geospatial side of their organization and the services they provide uh, is irreplaceable or that they couldn't function as it does without geospatial. And so uh, that focus on the templates, uh, examples, um, feedback and input, one of the things that I think we're, we're gonna end up in a good position with in, in the formation and development of these um, agency managers and locality managers, uh, we're looking to, to broaden the scope so that uh, we can find 
uh, local government's elected officials that uh, probably fill the role of champion in their local enterprise, but being able to give that feedback and help tell that story uh, to the broader GIS community as we go through this facilitation and engagement. Uh, the same thing with the state agencies, uh, getting um, executive leadership, uh, agency IT directors, uh, getting them involved is either uh, participating members or at least subject matter experts that can demonstrate that uh, as important as the technical nuts and bolts of, of uh, the tactical management of GIS, it's as much the story of making sure that you're presenting your relevance in terms that, that those um, executive leaders are going to engage, acknowledge, and, and that's how you build a champion moving forward. We have the bridge uh, through uh, 12 noon. Um, we certainly appreciate uh, the participation and engagement of, of the folks that were able to join. Uh, we'll uh, be adding this to our webinar page so that others from the the academic community can, can uh, participate coming forward. Um, I can stay online for those that, that want to, to jump off. I'm providing my, my contact info here. Uh, we are going to be uh, targeting that January 7th Beijing board meeting uh, to have the, the public version of, of a lot of these documents done. So uh, this is going to be a, a focus of mine over the next three weeks to, to get this wrapped up on time. Um, so uh, for those that would like to stay and continue the discussion, uh, be more than welcome. For those that, that want to uh, jump off uh, and uh, maybe hit an early lunch or get back to, to your other engagements, I uh, certainly appreciate your right. participation. <laughs> yeah. You could have heard the crowd. You could imagine what they're doing. Right. So Joe, uh, one so thing that anyway. comes to mind is here. Uh, Certainly, we've got the more formalized engagement through the garden partnership where the universities are doing substantive things. Um, but as you outlined the strategic planning process where you have sort of these more intangible governance related things, I certainly see a role uh, for the universities, especially the, the larger ones that have had to deal with data governance policy development, uh, standards development. I certainly see a role for us in those discussions. I um, feel like we've had to wrestle with a lot of uh, similar things, uh, especially in the area of system architecture best practices. Uh, um, I know we have a uh, sort of an informal group of state higher ed institutions that meet under the auspices of the ESRI site license. And so we'll mm -hmm. get together and kind of discuss technical best practices there. Um, and I know that you know, universities are not a critical path phase one stakeholder group that you'll want to be convening in the first phase of the plan. But as you start to migrate into some of your strategic objectives that involve governance, involve architecture, um, involve standards, I think we can certainly be an asset to you. I completely agree. Um, I, I want to see all of those, those stakeholder groups uh, be engaged with one another. Uh, if I jump back here, I think it's that slide, uh, the dotted line between those um, advisory groups. Uh, we want engagement across those those areas, um, and you know, academic and business will also uh, eventually uh, be melded into this process. Uh, the other uh, highlight that, that I would bring out in the area is that in the summer of 2018, uh, the Commonwealth appointed a chief data officer, Carlos Rivero, uh, came uh, to the position uh, with a past experience in GIS. I uh, had several good conversations with him, uh, anticipate uh, him having some role in the, the state agency management group, but um, I'm completely sold that um, a lot of the, the areas that uh, we've talked about as, um, 
higher uh, aspirational use of, of GIS to reduce duplication of effort, to encourage reuse of data. Um, I would say that, that the GIS scope pipe uh, has actually presented uh, the broader GIS community of awareness for uh, things like data architecture, business process modeling, uh, content that, that should be driving um, standards developments. Um, we're, we're reinventing the wheel and making our lives more difficult and simultaneously not as well engaged uh, with, a, with a broader context and, and, a, and a broader opportunity. So uh, I definitely see um, the, the trends of particularly analytics, uh, making sure that uh, we're making best and most efficient use of, of some of the geospatial tools that, that, that um, are tangential to, to, to common systems like um, Power BI and um, Tableau and others. I think there'd be a lot of opportunity that can be uh, gained on the analytical side and, and increasing the toolbox with some better data architecture and data governance uh, practice. And we've already seen examples of that in, in VDOT, uh, in uh, DEQ, and in and other opportunities and, and examples across the nation that we can uh, replicate. Um, to hopefully to build across those uh, those stakeholder communities and, and build on the opportunity. So um, everything is, is going to be transparent. Everybody, will, everything will be linked inside that story map, and uh, we'll be able to to invite uh, the stakeholder communities uh, into the process. Um, I guess on, on a very practical level, uh, we've had uh, some internal discussion with the the data engineering group. At, at George Mason, uh, I was part of a, a team of students uh, or advising some students uh, at VCU uh, in the past semester on the challenges of uh, parcel data normalization and, and tying that, that content model back to um, user stories and business requirements, uh, business entities, and um, some of the, the challenges of uh, getting 133 localities pulling the same rope in the same direction. So uh, again, hopefully um, doing a, a demonstration and a pilot, if you will, uh, of what the opportunities could be uh, and what the, the challenges for scalability and, and data access, data maintenance uh, within the, the environments and scope of, of each of the, um, the independent localities. Definitely sounds good. I know that we are uh, we're finding not just in our context here in Blacksburg, but uh, I think nationally, we're seeing a trend uh, with with geospatial starting to become recognized as a first class enterprise system, and one that can benefit from governance practices that have previously been applied to good effect in other business verticals. And uh, with the trend towards uh, business intelligence, uh, data-driven decision-making, uh, the pervasive analytics across organizations, that kind of has been the catalyst for the recognition of, oh, GIS has a lot in common with some of these other enterprise systems. And oh, by the way, GIS uh, serves often very ably as the glue that links together a lot of these disparate systems in an analytical context. Absolutely, and I think uh, part of the, or the, one of the significant drivers for exactly what you described is the, the evolution of, of generational expectations, uh, specifically as, as boomers uh, retire as X's and millennials, uh, come into increasingly higher levels of, of management and responsibility. Um, I think that 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 has a component to to this trend that's only going to get uh, more and more uh, noticed and, and have frankly become a, a an enterprise expectation. And so um, I would see that we're in a, a very convenient time frame uh, to be able to, to set some foundations. 
Um, I'm a very strong advocate for uh, prototype pilot production kinds of, of demonstrations so that uh, you can have the early adopters that, that see the value, uh, real or perceived. Uh, those demonstrations can inform scalability and, and other issues. But again, those demonstrations that um, wherever you're at in your enterprise journey, um, that you can come on at a time when, when that value proposition is, is right for, for your enterprise. Okay, um, I've uh, put my uh, information back up here. Uh, it's all over the, the Vision website or the ISP website. Um, I've had folks tell me that I'm a pretty easy guy to track down. So again, I want to, to reiterate and thank everyone for their time today. Uh, there is time for feedback and input. I'll be getting the webinars up uh, hopefully uh, later this week or early next week and definitely solicit your uh, feedback and input uh, on the, the documents available, but then also as we proceed forward on this path, uh, we definitely want to uh, be as open, transparent, and engaging as, as we can. So thank you again, and have a good rest of your Wednesday. Same to you. We'll see you at VAMLIS, if not before. Okay. Thanks, Beth.